nobody knew where he was for two days. So I'm sitting there and I'm staring at the phone and I see somebody in front of my truck. He's looking at me like, oh shit, she saw, she's caught me. He broke into my, uh, um, my hotel room and threw my clothes what? around. But you knew it was him. Well, who else without would be shot, in yeah, my like unmentionables? The man tried to kill you. I was not expecting that. That was a real plot twist. So I, you were telling me earlier today about a story that I'd like for you to share with Sean. This is a good one, Sean. I like it. She's got a very interesting story. It involves a little bit of stalking. Oh, <laughs> oh the stalker. That one. That <clears> one, <throat> yes. You don't mind. Give Sean a briefing on that. Now he's going to love this. Okay. So it was a couple years back, and I had to set up a job site in Colorado, and um, they said the superintendent would be along soon. I was handing over the job site to him. <clears throat> so when I was leaving, I was like, I'll be back in a week. I just know it. I just know it. Um, he pulled up with his whole life in his truck. It was a Ram, <laughs> a Ram truck with a cab on the back and he oh. had everything he ever owned. And I'm like, okay, his girlfriend kicked him out. I just know it. <laughs> Um, cause he had his whole life in there. He had every tool he owned. He told me things I didn't want to know. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just, I just had a gut feeling. Yeah. So I got on a plane, I left and about a week later I got a call and then they said, um, we need you back. Greg's sick. And I'm like, okay, all right. I'll be on a plane, be like on a plane said. tomorrow. So I, I got there and he was, he was there with the project manager and they were walking around and he's sitting there and he's like, got his glasses on. He's like, Oh, woe is me. The sun is so hot. <laughs> it's so, it's so bright. And I'm like, this guy is drunk. I think so. It sounds like Sean on it every day. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't help it. Uh, so, uh. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, this guy, this guy is too much. So I said, well, if you're so sick, I don't want it. Go home because I'll just wait till you're done. And then you can take back over the, the job site. It was a Friday. I got there on a Friday. So I had off the next day and I, I said, oh, you know, I'm going to go do a little shopping maybe and uh, go to a movie. Cause that's what I usually do when I was traveling on the weekends. Cause I was by myself. I was going to the movies and I was sitting in the parking lot. Um, right between the food store and the liquor store. And I was sitting in, I was sitting in my truck and I'm, I'm looking at my phone because I made my reservation for the movie on my phone. So I'm sitting there and I'm staring at the phone and I see somebody in front of my truck and he has a brown bag in his arm. Oh, it's Greg. <laughs> It's great. And, and he's, and he's walking across and he looks at me. I look at him and I go, ah, oh, I've been made. So, <laughs> so he's looking at me like, oh shit, she saw, <laughs> she's caught me. So I go, uh, come around to the window. <laughs> so I roll the window down. I go, uh, Greg, I thought you were sick, which is why I flew out here. And he's like, well, oh, I've been drinking almond milk for the last two days with my dead grandma's blanket on me so i can hear the the glass clinking and I've got <laughs> two bottles of alcohol in there so i was like well i really think you should be in bed sleeping not drinking alcohol because you're so sick and, and he's like he's like uh yeah that's a good idea and i'm looking at his truck and i'm like yeah that's quite quite a lot of damage you did to the truck. And he goes, well, that wasn't me. The, the, the guy hit me. Oh, so you noticed some new damage on his vehicle. Yeah. I said, oh, you're the one who drove under his truck. How did he hit you? <laughs> and he's, he's like, well, you know, uh, he stopped short. And I'm like, you're supposed to be watching. You're the one in back. But yeah. I think you should go home because I'm going to the movies. So 
I don't know where he went after that. So he had rear-ended someone and left the scene, I guess? No, I mean, he got arrested. He got arrested for oh that. Oh, my. Because oh. he, he didn't show up to the subcontractor meeting. That's why you were there. Knew, His ass was incarcerated. And knew, and he nobody knew where he was for two days. Oh, my. You're, so your you're, you're intuition, your gut feeling was right. You'd be returning to this yeah so i mean so when i got back i was finding like little airplane bottles and stuff on site and and i didn't i didn't really know who they were but i did and then um <laughs> so <laughs> so as i was on site um he started to do weird things like he would he would come to the job site um we had to have police there um watching me because he was saying that i stole his job um you know, he got his first paycheck. So he went on, you know, he went on a binger. Um, and you, you knew it from when he's talking to him. And well, he, would, he would said, call me. Who who hired this guy? One of the, one yeah. of the project, not project managers. Uh, well, one of the, um, the yeah. field ops managers yeah, well, had I, hired him. Yeah, see, I, I, don't, I don't know him. I don't have to worry. I'll call him out. Go ahead. Sounds like, like the same people that give me a job. <laughs> like <Sean's laughs> boss. So, so, um, so what happened was, uh, he came on the job site and the guys all knew, I said, if you see him come on the job site, we have to leave and I have to be protected because he was after me. He broke into oh, wow. my, uh, um, my hotel room and threw my what? clothes around. So I had to, I had to, um, give his picture to everybody in the hotel um because i i mean i don't know how he got in he was i was at work but you knew it was him well who else would be in my like unmentionables um i don't i don't know like all my stuff was thrown around it you know wow and i and i don't let anybody in my room when i'm at a hotel i usually let them in once a week to you know make the bed and change everything Mm-hmm. clean up because i usually clean up myself i don't want anybody in my room uh, uh, I, I when i'm staying there a long time yeah, especially, yeah so so eventually um he started calling me he, he went into the hospital he had his father call me and told me he was my he was like he's your best friend and i'm like i just met this guy like yeah. like uh, three weeks ago <laughs> yeah, he's my best man, friend his father called you yes his father's a doctor and he called me and he said you know you know, he, he's, uh, he's telling me that he's really sick and, you know, I'm going to have to come up there. And I'm like, look, I don't want anything to do with him anymore. You have to call my boss because he's the one in charge. I, I, I can't be involved with him. So he Sounds eventually like your boss should have been in, involved a long time ago. <laughs> well, they, they were, but he was like bypassing. Cause obviously he knew my phone, you know, my phone number uh, cause we were working together at first. Right. So, um, I, I finally, we finally got somebody, um, to, uh, come and give him his last paycheck, empty his apartment that he was occupying. And, um, he left, wow. we, we thought he left. Um, he only drove oh like four hours away and I was always looking for the truck because I was like, you yeah. know, paranoid. We had the, the police there for a couple days longer after he, he left because he was supposed to come back for a court date three weeks later. Now that three weeks we were, um, one of the girls in the office was looking online, typed in his name and his obituary came up. Oh my. So, so he was found dead in a hotel room four hours away. Oh, wow. So I, I felt guilty for a long time about that because I just did. I mean, yeah, you killed him. No, you didn't do anything wrong. I know, and I had to tell myself that, but... I have to tell you now, I feel compelled. <laughs> Believe me, you... I, but I get that you would feel guilt, but then again... I mean, I didn't I didn't know. make the choice to drink myself to death. I didn't make the choice to buy whatever, if he was doing any kind of drugs. I didn't make that choice, but when when somebody says, you took my job, which I didn't, he did mm. it himself... No. You kind of feel guilty when they find you dead in some I, hotel room. I do. Yeah, look, I mean, Sean will tell you the same thing I'm telling you now, but that's something you shouldn't carry, and I hope you don't. No, I don't anymore. It was only a 
it was only a month or two that I was like, oh my God, I killed this guy. Oh my God, oh God, you know, because he was feeling sorry for himself and he was obviously that way before I even met him. Yeah. I doubt you were even on his mind when he- I would have showed up at the funeral. Don't feel that. And did this. (laughs) The smallest violin just playing for you. (laughs) That man tried to kill you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he should be feeling guilty in hell right now. I shouldn't say that, but <laughs> it's not your guilt to carry. Is what I'm trying to say. That was wrong. <laughs> but no, I'm not going to take it back. No, it's it's no. I really, I don't want you to feel anything out of that. Especially that's wow. I didn't, I yeah, I didn't know that deep of the story when you told it. I was not expecting that. That was uh, a real plot twist. Yeah, that was. Yes, it. it was. It was a plot twist, especially when the girl from the office called me and she said, "Kathy, I just found this obituary." Oh yeah. And so I'm like, tell us what? about how you found out. So you're on the job and somebody from your office calls you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I was. Like, That's like Netflix original movie. That is it. We've got a. Movie. It was a movie of the week. It was. <laughs> I felt like I was in somebody else's life. It was kind of surreal.